Welcome to another edition of the Touchdown Club Coaches Show. Coach Masella, Max Rotnecker, thank you so much for tuning in, Coach. Took a trip to Philly um, and and showed a lot of promise um, at Lincoln Financial Field against Temple. Yeah, I thought our kids played really hard. Uh, uh, they competed. We ran out of gas in the second half, but um, I thought it was a good showing by our kids. Now, when you're looking at um, earlier in the season, you, you mentioned in order to win some of those games, you need to survive the first quarter. And so you come out... Um, and score, take the ball and, and go right down the field and your freshman quarterback and your freshman running back get on a, uh, go on a 70-plus yard drive to, to take the lead and actually held the lead into the second quarter. So, so what goes sh through your mind as you're on the sideline there um, and, and, and you're leading and, and you're getting stops and you're moving the football and everything seems to be going your way? Yeah, it, you know, you just got to keep, as we talk to our players, one play at a time, one series. Uh, and one quarter and keep moving and and you know the first quarter we came out and did some things and it was nice to you know score right off the bat and then make get a big stop or two big stops and um, you know uh, then I think they, they had a little more than we had we played a lot of uh, guys for the first time we were younger actually yes uh, Saturday than we've been at any point in the year because of injuries but um, it was great to see our kids go out and compete and, and, and play against a, you know, a, a Division I, a Group 5 team and, and compete for, for really three quarters. Now, um, last week as we, as we previewed Temple, you, you talked about how much the guys love playing in those games because they get to measure themselves against high-level competition, an FCS opponent lining up across from you. And there was a couple guys that, that showed that they belong on a field not just once a year or twice a year, but possibly every every Saturday. There's no question. Our, our level in, in Wagner College has always had some players that could play up, and, and certainly that's no uh, no different this year. Uh, you know, Titus, you know, showed that he can play at that level. Uh, but there was a few other plays. Uh, uh, you know, Ricky <laughs> showed that he's a really good football player running back, and uh, he's only going to get better. So uh, you can go across the board. But there, there's players in every program that can play at that level. It's it's making sure you're in the right spot at the right time um, if you get that opportunity. So Now, quickly, I, you know, I love talking about the kicking game and special teams. You're, you're starting to force some turnovers. You forced one against Buffalo, forced another one on a muffs punt here. Um, some people call the punt the most important play in football. How are you... Um, you got a lot of freshmen there, but how are you starting? Are you starting to trust your special teams more well, as the year goes on? You know, I I think if you would have asked uh, how we played on special teams Saturday, uh, we would take that every time. It's it's uh, we we stalemated Temple in in the kicking game. Uh, their punter is an unbelievable punter, but uh, they had and they had a great punt returner. They were negative yards punt return. We did cause a turnover. Um, we did. We didn't do much with the kickoff team, uh, but uh, you know that that I think has to do with some of the athletes they put out there. But later on in the game, we got one over out, out over the thirty. So, you know, the big thing is uh, not to turn the ball over. We didn't have any penalties. We caused a turnover, and uh, you know the disappointing one we missed a field goal late before uh, late in the first half uh, that would have made it a, a one score game. But um, overall, I was pleased with what our special teams did. And and you mentioned the numbers again in your goal board. Looks like your goal board was pretty full again. Even you know a loss is a loss, and there's no moral victories in college football. But I'm sure your 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 goal board was pretty good as far as you outrushed the opponent. Um, you, it was even in the turnovers, and and so there's your you once again the progression we're, keeps moving. We're 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 getting ourselves in the spot to be competitive each week, and. Um, you, you know, baby steps. Uh, the program, we, we haven't won a game in a long time, but we're, we're putting ourselves in a position to win football games, and eventually the wins will come. We just got to stay with it, keep keep plugging away each and every week, get a little bit better, and then uh, those wins are going to come. So we just got to stay with what we're doing, um, get get people healthy, get get our younger uh, younger players uh, more experience as we go forward and and uh, and keep competing and um, you know I was pleased with the way we competed and the effort uh, wasn't always pleased with the execution but that's uh, that's coaches in general are never pleased with that but 
Uh, our kids gave great effort and uh, they competed and we just got to keep building on that and eventually the wins are going to start to come. Now got another opportunity on Saturday and we'll take a look at that right after the break. You're watching the Touchdown Club Coaches Show on NEC Front Row. At Wagner College, we have this beautiful campus where I get to know my professors and I make great friends. I've gotten really involved in the local community, leading theater programs. At the same time, New York City surrounds us so I can get internships at prestigious organizations, explore cultures from all over the world, and experience just life as a city girl. At Wagner, I learn by doing. It's practical. It's the Wagner plan. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools for nearly half a million student athletes. College sports create lifelong opportunity, and that starts with education. We've raised the academic bar, so more are earning degrees, creating healthier campuses by working with the nation's brightest minds, and making sure more have the chance to succeed and are supported on their journey. But beyond the numbers, it's about opportunity, and we're working to provide it for every student athlete. Welcome back to the show. Time to now preview next week's opponent, Delaware State, another non-conference opponent, coming into hopefully a packed house at Hamline Field, part of uh, Wagner Weekend, a great celebration coming up. Um, so, so what are your expectations coming into this game? Well, I, I think it's two evenly matched teams. Um, you know, it should be a good contest. They got a whole bunch of athletes on, on both sides of the ball, um, but it's an evenly matched team against, a, a, you know, a an FCS opponent that um, I look forward to it. I think it's going to be a, a game that, you know, the team that comes up with the most big plays is, is going to win and who, who does a good job with special teams. I don't think it changes. For us, being home is a great thing, and the homecoming makes it even better because homecomings here are usually uh, traditionally, um, you know, pr pretty good pretty good atmosphere around here. So, so we look forward to a great game and, um, you know, going out and competing again. And hopefully uh, this time we make enough plays to win a game. Now looking at it, and you mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, there's a bunch of people that are, that are saying, hey, um, you, you play these FBS opponents and like they're so much bigger than you, you're going to get hurt. Now you now have played, you've played five, four games and you've played two games against FBS opponents and you've played two games against FCS opponents. And... Um, I'm not the athletic trainer, but it looks like you came out of, of the FBS games much better than the than the conference games. I, I I always think that's the way. I mean the 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 one A games have a cumulative effect over the long haul, but in in the short term, uh, we we came out pretty clean. Um, whereas we lost a bunch of guys against St. Francis, so you know go figure. You know I think it comes down to. Uh, uh, go play as hard as you can, and if you play hard, usually you stay away from injuries, and I thought our kids played hard Saturday. Now, one of the unfortunate, amongst um, the unfortunate things about a college football season is that the, the time clock starts ticking a little bit for your seniors who are looking to play their last couple of games and go out on a high note. How hungry are those seniors now to, to, uh, to go out and compete after, after two straight road games in front of the home crowd? I hope very hungry. We'll, we'll find <laughs> out, but, but um, you know, I hope they're really excited to play Saturday, a homecoming crowd at home and uh, hopefully we can get that monkey off our back that, uh, that our seniors have been carrying around for a while. Well, thank you, Coach. Uh, we're going to take another quick break. It's the Touchdown Club Coaches Show on NEC Front Row. Welcome back to the show. 
Um, Coach, a lot of a lot of exciting things happened on the field on Saturday um, during the game, but obviously, you know, there was also a couple firsts. Obviously, the 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 gray uniform stood out. You got some you got some fresh new jerseys. Well, that that's uh, that's a credit to our touchdown club, and they're 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 you know supporting us. Uh, we we uh, have brand new uniforms that we broke out against Temple, and hopefully, we'll break them out again. Uh, in the near future, but uh, it's it's a good thing, and we had a lot of alums at the game on Saturday, so uh, great. We're traveling well with our alums, and and hopefully that will continue as we go forward. Now you're super busy on game day, but how many do you get to meet people like before the game? Do you look up in the stands sometimes yeah. when there's a TV timeout, and you're like, oh, I recognize that well, person. You know, uh, uh, one of my high school and college teammates uh, was on the sideline. And he came up and hugged me right before the right before the kickoff because I just want to give you a hug. And I looked and and it was Bob Olson. So, um, yeah, you know, you, you you see him and and I talked to you know quite a few before before as the week went on. And um, you know, it's great to see that guys are are excited and 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 uh, our our support. Uh, they're excited about what we're trying to do and, and they're supportive of our players. And, and that's a great thing. And we got to keep building on that. And, and like I said, uh, you know, one day they're going to smile after the game just like I will. And uh, we, we can't wait for that day to happen. And and so so you've been coaching for a while and you've coached all over the place. Um, now, now, do you still get that adrenaline flowing as you're as you're going on the bus into the stadium, or and, and uh, as you're approaching kickoff, you're running out on the field, or 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 are you more the the mellow person that that doesn't let anything phase them? Uh, I I don't know if I let things phase me, but I, I'm still excited taking the bus ride, getting out and getting into the locker room, and then going out on the field. I, it's probably a more quiet intensity, but um, it hasn't changed for for many years, and and I still get a little butterflies before the game, and the mouth gets dry, and um, <laughs> you know you you lose your voice a little bit. But um, no, it's still exciting, still great. It's great to be a part of college do, football. Do, do you have a pregame routine? You're not a big music guy. I can tell we're, when we're when we're departing for the bus. You're one of the few people on the bus that doesn't have a, like the headphones. And uh, I, I have my routine on game day. I work out every morning. Um, you know, before the game or at some point before the game. And then I'll go in and, and uh, on the bus ride, depending on how long it is, look over some charts and things that, that I make notes of that, that I want to see happen. And then, um, you know, as we get closer to it, uh, I, I kind of try to stay out of uh, off the field as much as possible because uh, as I get older, a pregame kind of drives me a little crazy. So, uh so I try to stay in the locker room and, and, and think about, you know, things that, that may come up that uh, we want to handle. But uh, overall, you know, you've done it, you know, I've done it a long time now. Um, you see a lot of things, and you, every once in a while you see something new. And um, uh, so, but but I'll tell you what, there's no better day, there's no better day than game day on a Saturday. I don't care where you're playing, who you're playing. It's exciting to be out there and, and, and see our kids compete, and, and hopefully we're competing with them. There truly is no better feeling than game day, and we can't wait for you guys to appreciate it with us and be there in person to support the Seahawks on Saturday against Delaware State. Thank you, Coach, as always. Thank you for tuning in. It's been the Touchdown Club Coaches Show on NEC Front Row.